Welcome to this uh, EACV podcast. Uh, I'm Jean-Nicolas Cornu, uh, and I welcome uh, Dr. Manuela Tutolo today to discuss about the uh, EAU guidelines about non-neurogenic male lots management. A couple of new chapters have enriched the guidelines in the past months and years. Um, the, the, the first uh, uh, innovation in those guidelines uh, is that we changed the title, actually, to, to, to cover broadly the field of male lots, non-neurogenic, including, of course, benign prosthetic obstruction, but also incontinence and underactive bladder, which are the new things we're going to discuss today. So, Manuela, can you tell us about this um, male incontinence new chapter that was integrated in the guidelines? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Nicola. Um, we really wanted to create a new chapter in order to tell urologists and general practitioners, but also patients, how his and or how should be the management, the assessment and the management of patients with urinary incontinence, also subdividing this chapter from the other chapters that can be also related to incontinence, but don't have a specific um, assessment when we talk about post-prostatectomy incontinence or mixed urinary incontinence in men mm-hmm. or uh, overactive bladder and urinary incontinence in men. So we really create a new chapter in which... Um, physician can be guided through the assessment and through the management of these patients, um, up, uh, updating the evidences uh-huh. and updating the recommendation for uh, incontinence management and treatment. We updated the session on urodynamic tests in uh, okay. incontinent patient, which is really important because we still don't know which patient should be uh, assessed also with okay. urodynamics, which is something that in our clinical practice, it's really important. And this is the importance of the chapter because we really want it to be clinically meaningful. So we really want it to uh, uh, guide uh, our um, readers um, during the everyday clinical practice. Okay. We didn't aim at being a textbook, but really a clinical guide. So uh, through the, the, the guidelines, but also through the app, we can check for the correct flow chart for the assessment okay. and for the management of patients with incontinence right. and really choose uh, or, or uh, be helped in choose, uh, choosing what is the best approach to this patient. And I think this is really important because we, we clarified compared to the past years, what is the, 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 uh, what should be the correct assessment and kind of uh, uh, a new aspect uh, were underlined in the management of this patient with incontinence because we know that incontinence, for example, in the females, it's really like well-known or better studied. And in male patients, we still have some problems and some doubt and there is no clinical guidance to, 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 to really say, okay, for this patient, you should do this. And this is really important. So we we, we aimed at at creating a new tool to really help and counsel clinicians, but also patients. And I think it's really uh, nice, I think, from this guideline is that at the end of each paragraph, we have clinical practical consideration, which uh, even people not really into the scientific world can understand and can put into their clinical practice. And I think it was the same we did with the underactive bladder uh, session because it's another aspect we, 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 we wanted to assess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the underactive bladder was thought exactly the same way. I mean, to have the full patient journey. Um, so for this topic, uh, um, it, it's, le- it's a bit less clinical because uh, for... Um, Incontinence, we had to discuss the type of incontinence, with that a storage issue, with that a stress incontinence, post prostatectomy. It was more a categorized uh, area with the, some therapeutic resources to, um, to put in a flowchart and 
helpful choices. For underactive bladder, we started quite from scratch because there was no specific guidelines, and I'm not really aware that some other groups did that before in the way we did. So we had to start first with the definition and the epidemiology, um, introducing, introducing new concepts for this. Um, the point is that we aim at separating symptoms uh, from pathophysiology and uh, um, from the disease itself, and we want the readers to understand very well what it is. I mean, starting from avoiding symptoms, we know that it can be an obstruction, but it could be also because of the bladder. Exactly. The prostate is not everything. So we first define the fact that underactive bladder as a eurodynamic definition. There are several. It's a bit tricky, but we sorted the literature to be very informative. And we distinguished this underactive bladder concept from the symptoms, from the voiding symptoms, to get an explanation, as we did with BPE, BPO, BPH. Okay. All of this is not really the same. And then we um, had this rigorous systematic review approach, as always, to get a chapter detailing the therapeutic options. So all the options um, about interactive bladder have been considered, and I must say that one of our challenges was to mix those issues with BPO and underactive bladder, which are the most tricky patients, exactly. as you know. So we, we had to, to be very cautious because they, we lack some clinical evidence and we lack clinical trials specifically focused on this. I mean, it's, it's something quite new in terms of how do we look at the patient. We look more globally on the patient's his symptoms and what he wants. I mean, this, this is kind of new. We have been switching for treating a prostate, and now we really treat men. And I think that's the spirit of the old guidelines, and it perfectly correlates with what you said um, ahead in, in your talk. I mean, it's focusing on, on patients' uh, expectations, focusing on global health of those patients, sometimes post-cancer, which is a very <laughs> difficult situation because the guy has gone very a specific journey, uh, with a lot of pressure, with a lot of problems already. And for those patients, I think we need together to uh, work on it and uh, have a better information for colleagues who finally raised our exactly. bar and, and raised patient care. Exactly. Well, exactly. this would be the lesson for today, I think, exactly. Manuela. Exactly. exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.